We start every uh, Q&A episode with a question from the wonderful people on our Discord server. And this week's question from the Discord server is this. Do you think there are risks to becoming very tanned from the sun if it's done gradually and without burning? I am inclined to avoid sunscreen and just use shade and clothes to avoid burns. Maybe what we consider very tanned is actually normal. Um, yeah, I think it is normal. I think um, obviously different people have different sensitivities uh, and this is, uh, and, and, and you know yourself best, and it is harder to predict now based on where you think your people are from, um, going back into history, um, given that especially, um, I mean, all over the world, but especially in the U.S., we're all kind of mutts now. So uh, we've got lots of different um, different ethnicities and lineages that uh, have combined into each of us. So someone, you know, even, even full siblings may have very different sun sensitivities. But if uh, that is working for you, uh, I do not understand why um, you would work to not be tanned if you are not burning. My one uh, hesitation here has to do with the term very. Mm -hmm. There is a fair amount known about this. There was a paradox in uh, the dermatological literature which is that sun exposure was understood to lead to skin cancer, but people who had extreme sun exposure over long periods of time, people who worked outdoors like cowboys, uh, had very low levels of skin cancer. So what the heck? Now, it turns out that the telomere work that I did reveals the answer to why this would be the case and actually allows us to give you some fairly precise advice. Sunburns are the thing you are attempting to avoid. Extreme sun exposure short of burns will not give you cancer, but it does do damage to your skin. It results in a loss of the flexibility of skin uh, due to destruction of collagen, which is hard to resurrect. The Obviously, there are substantial benefits to significant sun exposure, vitamin D production being one of the main ones, but not the only one. So the upshot is, yep, avoid sunscreen if you can do so without burning. I would say avoid extreme tanning. In other words, somewhat tan probably is healthy, but the benefits are going to go down and the other costs that are not uh, malignancies will go up. And that what you really want to do is shoot for the sweet spot, but that are... Well, but, but then... So how, how do you avoid extreme tanning? And, you know, extreme, very, you know, these are words that are squidgy, but I would say, um, you know, vitamin D is not the only benefit. Near-infrared radiation, um, you know, there's, there's just a lot of benefits to being outside. And usually, if you if you know yourself, you can sense when actually I, 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 I should get out in out of the sun at this point. And, uh, but if you, if your work or... Uh, you know, forces or allows uh, you to be outside a lot. Uh, the idea that um, you should not be outside, you should no. be covering yourself in sunscreen. Like no. I don't, I don't buy either of those as solutions. So that's that's not what I'm saying. It's the very that suggests an effort put into tanning. Not at all. That, that explicitly not in this question. No effort put into tanning. That is not. Um, that is that is not the impetus here. I'm inclined to avoid sunscreen and just use shade and clothes to avoid burns. Well, but so this is this is this is I not agree. about you know should what, what do you think about putting baby oil on and lying out under the sun? That's that's not the question. Okay, still there is a gap between avoiding burns and uh, the optimal level of sun exposure. What sun exposure short of burns does, extreme sun exposure, is ages the skin. So you don't want to age your skin, but you are correct. The, the belief that we all intuitively carry that a tan person looks healthy is probably accurate. And so you're shooting for a sweet spot and burns are not the evidence that you're off it. Burns are several stages below or above that, that optimal level. So anyway, I, th I, think, I think in there, all of the stuff you would want to navigate a correct path is between what you said and what I did. Yeah, I don't, I'm, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I agree with you. Um, you know, it's, I, I think if a person 
seeking shade while outside when you are feeling that you are when you feel that you are getting too much sun is the right thing to do yep but heading inside or heading under shade when you are feeling good in the sun but you have something in your head about like well i don't want to get too tan that feels to me wrong i i i think that that is going to be an error well i mean you know i'm advocated and I, in fact i do as you do take short breaks that long exposure to the sun punctuated by short breaks but seems that's about burning and i mean it, it may be that you and i have different um different feelings here like you know a i'm i'm just i always have been but increasingly especially in the summer just like i just want to be outside all the time yep um but also you you are my skin responds very differently yeah i don't tan very well and um you know the older i get the the more likely i am to have issues but you know i i just i always tanned quickly and uh and the fact was uh that and i think this is true for most people who who tan easily and don't burn at all in their youth um that it's not that i kept on getting darker and darker as a kid um but i like a younger son who I would call the nut brown boy, you know, after a couple of weeks, just spending a lot of time outside, like he'd get that color. And then it's not that he kept on getting darker. It's like, oh, you're the nut brown boy now. And, you know, same thing for me when I was little, just like you get. So I don't I don't think that. Um, I don't I don't I don't think you can even use a, a visual metric of like, oh, well, you know, maybe maybe it's too far now. Well, again, I, I think, I mean, the one thing I think I may have failed to say is that it is early sunburns that cause cancers, even though cancers happen late. Early in life. Early in life, yes. Mm -hmm. Sunburns that you get when you're young for reasons that we've talked about before, and I, I think I won't go into here. But um, I, I think you have the knowledge you need, which is sun exposure is good to a point at which you start doing damage, and extreme damage is a risk for malignancy. Um, so navigating to healthy levels of tan is good. And if that's what you were asking about, then yep, you're right. And if you were asking about being deliberate about tanning and potentially going farther than you otherwise would, that's probably, probably too far. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't see that in the question at all, but I would say, um, seeking a skin color that you find beautiful because you find it beautiful. A lot of people will do that, but that's if if that's your incentive, you may make mistakes. Yeah. Right. Um, being outside and having a collateral benefit be that you end up with a skin color that you find more beautiful uh, is is a different thing. So at some level, you're you're suggesting something about incentives. I think. Well, actually, there is one way in which the incentive for an attractive tan is probably healthier than just incidental tan which is, and I, I don't know this to be true, but I would bet strongly in favor of this, that lots of sun exposure is positive for near-infrared reasons, for vitamin D reasons, for general health reasons. The way we clothe ourselves such that when we are in the sun, large parts of us go almost unexposed is probably not good. And this, I, I actually... I think there is something important here, and I have not, I've not seen the literature. I haven't done a ton of looking, but um, I will say that um, just anecdotally, uh, I never wore um, two piece. I never, I never wore bikinis. I was, just not, I was not interested in doing so. Yeah, uh, and I certainly don't now. Um, but. I got a two piece bathing suit um, for paddle boarding. Um, precisely because I had this sense of actually maybe I want, even though I don't, I don't, I don't want to be that unclothed in public. Right. But like, I would actually like some sun on my yeah. torso, which I haven't had sun on my torso in like ever basically. Yeah. And, um, not only did I get some sun right away that was visible, but, um, I also started feeling healthier in ways in my gut actually that I, had, and maybe it was coincidental, but it felt like, oh, this, this, there might be something very important here about actually exposing all of your skin yeah, uh, to the sun, as opposed to, I mean, like at this point, I've been biking a lot. My forearms have had, I mean, I, to, to your point, I think my forearms have had too much sun exposure. Yeah. Frankly, they're, you know, they're getting kind of crispy and, and they're not burnt at all, but, yeah. um, 
and I would, you know, I would, rather, I would rather cover these and like have my back exposed, but I'm not going to bike without a shirt. Yeah. Now, I, uh, it also raises a question as to whether or not uh, the vitamin D deficiency that us uh, northern dwellers have is entirely about um, lack of exposure to the sun in terms of time rather than surface area. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, yeah. there's something to be done when you can afford to expose more of your body rather than expose the same parts of your body for longer. Probably there's a increased benefit of doing yeah. that yeah I think and so. i guess my, my final point was if you're looking for an aesthetically pleasing tan that is what you would do mm -hmm. right tan lines are considered uh a negative with respect to a tan so anyway somebody who was yeah, thinking for, for some people <clears throat> that's that's not a universal okay um but you know the the so-called farmer's tan is is usually not what people it's are not what for. people are shooting for no yeah. uh, not even farmers Presumably, yeah. yeah.